Hi, uh, I'm Gary. This is a uh, Kimball Voyager, which I think was made possibly in 1979, but possibly also in 1982. So take that with a huge grain of salt. Um, it is a uh, divide down organ. It's of the, what you would call a home organ class, but it's kind of a unique instrument. And um, I thought it might be nice to let you all hear a little bit of it and then hear a little bit of what you can do with it by uh, throwing a whole crap ton of effects on top of it. <laughs> um, so this organ has eight presets and eight rhythms. They are not adjustable. However, the tempo and volume of the rhythm section and the volume of the bass, which includes the sub oscillator in the chord section, and the balance between the accompaniment section, which is this octave down here, and the solo section, which is these three octaves here. Um, those are all manageable here. Uh, there's a volume knob here, obviously. Uh, the presets are full organ. Let's see, turn that up a bit. It's not a bad organ, really. This is the trumpet. It's obviously, you know, a saw-y kind of thing with a little bit of modulation happening there. This is the violin, which is mostly that, but an octave higher. This is the clarinet, which is a little sinier and lower, like the trumpet. If you think that that has potential, you're right. The piano. This is the most toy box piano I've ever heard in my life. Um, I haven't found yet a way to make it sound really cool, but I do believe that that's possible. The marimba. That's not bad. <laughs> this one is so... The banjo. However, it's got a kind of a clappy sound to it, and that's that, that turns out to be useful. The Hawaiian guitar. This may be the best sounding preset on the entire thing, and that's not actually uncommon for a lot of these little home organs. The Hawaiian guitar, I don't know why they call it that particularly, but it's this. That's pretty all by itself. Nobody had to do anything to that. Right. There are also eight rhythms. On this unit, all of the rhythms except for swing are working. I am working on fixing that. Um, this is the waltz. The tempo ranges from this. Old people, old people waltz all the way up to this. That is such a weird tempo range to find on the on the instrument. And But the thing is that what I'm seeing from, from watching other people looking at other instruments, because there's very little about this one online, <laughs> have fun, um, <clears throat> is that uh, they are uh, really... Uh, this tempo, that this this weird, this huge tempo adjustment range is actually typical. So if you ever decide to get yourself an electric organ, check that out. It might be fun for making, you know, textures and stuff. And I intend to try and use it that way. I only got this thing on, uh, like, Friday, so. If you're watching this later, Friday was, like, today is Monday, so. That's slow rock. Okay, that kind of sounds slow rocky. By the way, that that bass drum can 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 <laughs> yeah they can keep it. But that's not the worst snare and 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 hats I've ever heard, is it? No. Check this out. This is the country rhythm.
I have to say, it's not bad. Swing is the one that's not working. March. Okay. You know, at least it's mostly on that snare, which is still not bad. This is the rock and roll rhythm, which is actually pretty decent. It's pretty decent hand rhythm. Okay, this one is the absolute champion. Listen to the claves. I love that. I'm gonna let this run for a bit for people who wanna sample this. This one is Tango. And you know, yeah, that's what a Tango looks like, a Tango rhythm. Okay, um, so that's the rhythm section. This bottom octave is the chord section, and it has some of the uh, most beautifully useful chords, unless you're trying to play music that was written in the uh, 20th or, you know, 21st centuries. A minor, D7, G, C7, F, B flat, G7, C, A7, D minor, E flat, E, and F minor. Now, that's an interesting selection of chords because it's actually a more of what I would think of as a hymnal selection, right? So this is more of the chords that you would use for playing things like carols, um, hymns, and again, that's because this is, at its heart, not a synthesizer. It is a home organ with an interesting facelift. <laughs> it's a preset machine. So, but yeah, these are interesting. Uh, they're not terrible. None of them are terrible. And you can, in fact, do your own chording. So you can, you can have that chord, and it will. And so that's that's the chord. But that's the magic chords. That's the that's the one finger chords. Musical rhythm matches the the uh, accompaniment voicing, the chord voicing, to the rhythm, and it goes like this. And again, I'm just going to let somebody sample that if they want. So that's what musical rhythm does. And there's different rhythms for each of these. And I'll be honest, none of them are actually bad. Um, the rock and roll. Now that sounds miserlouish to me, but wait until you hear it <laughs> through effects. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, all right. So, um, then we have this uh, solo chord, which allows you to play one finger chords up here in the solo range, and I don't see the point of it, frankly. Um, magic Memory, which is just hold, okay? However, Magic Memory will also, if I, let's see, if I turn on the bossa here, right, and I turn on Magic Memory, the bossa stops. Now, I can start the bossa with the bass line just by playing the chord I want. Cool, huh? Um, let's see. Magic preset is simply an automatic preset selection. Let's say we have the bossa. And up here, I have selected the full organ. I press Magic Preset, and now I have... Again, 
not terrible. And there's again a preset matched with again with. So I think that maybe the guts of this are something that's kind of maybe like a con electric band. This is from after uh, Kimball acquired Jasper and Con. So I think that this is probably reusing some Con circuits. I haven't. I, I have not had the time to trace it again. I had. I picked it up a few days ago. But um, but yeah, I, it's, it's an interesting build because it's. I mean. Even when it came out, the technology inside of it is way obsolete. It's, it's like large-scale integration style ICs where there are ICs, and it's a lot of old technology. Um, but it's in beautiful shape because it's one owner, and it was owned by literally a little old lady who kept it in her parlor, and she's 100. And um, now it has a new home. So, uh, so let's hear what happens when you tap in a little wah. Uh, are we off here? Oh, magic piece. There we go. Oh. Oh, my. Wait, there's still more. This is a whammy button. Now that is an effect that could be incredibly annoying, but used correctly. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with here. So, uh, thank you very much for coming to my TED Talk. This is the Mighty V'ger. Uh, I am actually going to get some, uh, some black electrical tape to cover up the O, most of the Y, and the A. <laughs> uh, the Kimball Voyager from either 79 or maybe 82. It's really hard to tell. I, they stopped making them in 82. So, um, let's see. I have a little bit of drum machine. This is my, uh, so by the way, the, uh, the effects that are being used here, this is a, a Vox Tone Lab ST, and it is set to boutique uh, metal. It is set to the boutique metal setting, uh, me metal, uh, uh, the boutique metal, uh, it is set to the boutique metal amp simulation. <laughs> And uh, it is on the uh, the green ver variety, and the, uh, the 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 cab simulation is on. Um, the pedal section is set to the wah. The wah is the edit knob is at three o'clock. In the in the modulation section, I'm sorry. In the mod delay section, uh, the phaser is being used. The phaser control edit knob is at about 7 p.m., 7 o'clock. Um, in the reverb section, all three sections, by the way, are on. Uh, the uh, pedal is obviously controlling the cutoff for the wah. Um, in the reverb section, we are just into the hall sec the hall portion of the reverb. So if you have a tone lab, you can make it this way. But basically it's a light hall reverb, it's a moderate phaser, and it's a powerful wah. Okay, so that's that's what this is being run into. Now, um, I'm going to add a little chorus from up here on my mixer. <laughs> that. This is a Behringer RD6, which is, of course, a 606 clone. Okay. 
probably get around at some point to uh, posting a sample pack of this because it, it, there are some sounds that are worth hearing. Um, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, have a great day. <laughs>